Member Ascension Ladder. In this lesson, we're gonna be digging into how do we not only help our members succeed, but how do we ensure our members stay with us for long periods of time? How do we create those members that have been with us for five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 plus years? We know the market industry, the standard, says that most members actually leave in the first 100 days. So what are we doing different with the members that are staying for five, six, seven, ten 10 plus years? When we can understand what is happening in that relationship, we can start to replicate it, and that is how we build our member ascension ladder. Reach the summit of Everest, and you will be rewarded with another climb. Your member's Everest is their 90-day goal. The better we become at helping them achieve success, the more opportunities we will get. This success will allow the coaching relationship to ascend into a deeper relationship over time. Overview. In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at why you need an ascension ladder and why it's so important that you take action today to start to build yours. Then we're gonna break down the four different types of an ascension ladder. We have mega, macro, micro, and nano. The mega is the member lifetime journey. It's the entire time they're with you in the coaching relationship. We're also going to introduce at this point, probably for the first time ever of you taking a look at it, what is the actual double ascension ladder? And then from there, it's the big, hairy, audacious goal. This is that dream that they're after. That's where this fits in. When they walk in, they may set a goal of losing 100 pounds. That's a BHAG, right? But in the first 90 days, we know they can't lose 100 pounds. We don't want to disregard it. We want to we honor the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal. However, we have to create that SMART goal. That SMART goal will lead us to that that macro goal, which is our quarterly pulse. Every quarter we're sitting down, we're having a conversation, we're reestablishing the next SMART goal, we're taking a look at where we need to go. And then we have micro. Micro are our weekly uh, milestones, and they might be bi-weekly, they might be even uh, happening every 21 days. But the key is that milestones are mini goals that lead to the specific SMART goal. And then from there, we have our nano. This is really the daily interactions we're having with our members. It could be in person, it could be in a digital setting. There are check-ins, daily tools and habits. We're taking a look at what would make today a success. We're identifying future bright spots. Most businesses lack a true understanding of the ascension ladder and its power. When you master all four, you not only strengthen the relationship with the member, you also have a business with a strong, proven, and repeatable process. All right, we talked about this in early, earlier lessons. Not only do we want to have a proven process, we want it to be 100% repeatable. We need to be able to predict the result we're going to provide. If we're able to predict the result, we're able to speak with confidence to the prospect that we know for a fact that the problem they have, we can help them get out of pain and deliver them to that desired state. Again, understanding the process, understanding the touch points of the nano, the micro, the macro, and then the mega, ensures that that process starts to get put in place to ensure that repeatable result. Your competition, they offer a one-size-fits-all model that once the goal is met, if ever, leaves nowhere for them to ascend, leaving them looking for the next thing somewhere else. Heck, this might even be you right now. You're selling that one-size-fits-all model uh, they join your business and once they reach their goal, they're just kind of done. They don't understand what is next. We're going to take a look at how you can no longer be playing in this pond and how you can move to a true blue ocean where you're constantly sending people deeper into the relationship. The key to member retention is helping them achieve their initial goal and then being able to establish the next goal immediately after. This process will repeat itself. Please understand, the initial goal is what's important to them, right? It's that desired state. The market is going to tell us, and again, we, we've already learned all this in, in the previous lessons, but we know that the market is going to tell us what is important to them. We cannot dictate that initial goal. However, we can have major influence on the future goals. This is where a lot of businesses get it wrong. You are putting your, your knowledge to work towards the initial goal. We have to indoctrinate them. We have to get them up to speed of what those future goals could be. Delaying and actually delivering them what they want. Most of the time, again, if you're a brick and mortar gym, it's gonna be that initial, say, 20 pounds of fat loss. 
Once we get them that goal, we have trust in the relationship. That trust in the relationship plus our knowledge and our influence is going to allow us to be able to shape where they're going next. By delaying the path and actually giving them what they need to feel comfortable and to feel successful and confident, we're actually going to deepen and strengthen the relationship so we can truly transform them um, at a much deeper level. Again, each goal that we hit, we continue to repeat the process. At the end of this training, our goal is to have forged a systematic process that is repeatable, creates clarity, ensures fast results for your members, all while not being dependent on you. So for a lot of you, you, you've started your business, you're probably not brand new. You got probably half of this right already. You, you kind of understand how to coach your members. Uh, you maybe sort of have your, your offer, you kind of have a message. Where the big issue is that we skip the repeatable process. We skip creating the clarity. We, we skip building a system that ensures the result. And where we really go wrong is we skip all of this and we actually hire our first employee. And the reason why I say that is without this level of documentation, without completely uh, laying the foundation, it's impossible for your team members to succeed. And eventually you'll end up with uh, employee number two, three, four, and you're trying to manage them. However, the process is not put in place. So again, when we build businesses, and we'll break this down for you guys at later, later stages, but it's going to be understand who the niche is, understand what the result, the desired state is going to be, understand what that offer is going to be, what is that message, then from there, how do we attract, and then it's what is our proven process, what is that coaching program, what are all those touch points going to look like. From there, once that's all in place and we're starting to refine it, now we can look at bringing our team members in and saying, here's the proven process, let me train you on this process rather than having them trying to wing it. That's where a lot of businesses go wrong is they don't take the time to build the true foundation they need for the future team members uh, to use. In many ways, if you're a car, you have to build the chassis first because that's going to that's gonna hold every part of the car, the tires, uh, the seats, the radio, the engine, everything you need that's essential is going to be built into that chassis. That's what we're doing right now, building the chassis of your business to ensure that everything that we build on top of it uh, will be able to sit inside of it and be structured the way we need it. Imagine having a business that gets your members amazing results, has a team of coaches who ensure a world-class experience, and runs with or without you. That is what we'll build between the enrollment machine and mastery. First, we build and launch the machine. Then we'll scale through your team and eventually we'll work towards your freedom to allow the machine to run independent of you. Again, there's critical steps that we will take to ensure that this is done right. Build the product, build the coaching program, train the team, scale the business, and then from there, put a team and a management system in place that does not need you from a day to day. That's what freedom truly looks like, is having an asset, a business that truly serves your dreams. Before we move forward, I want to address the mistakes I've seen in every business make over the course of my entire career working with business owners. The five failures you need to avoid at all costs. Failure number one, failure to fully and clearly define the proven coaching process. They never define the process, mega, macro, micro, nano, thus creating a business that generates random results. This single bullet point, if skipped, the entire business will falter. It will never be optimized. It will never be truly strong. Majority of businesses that are going through this coaching program, this is where you're at. You, you may have a team of 10 coaches. You may have built out a, a, a big business, but you haven't actually done this one thing, and it will stop you from truly reaching your full potential. At some point, you have to go back and fix this. That's what we're going to be working on over the next few weeks is really defining this proven process to ensure it is 100% repeatable. From there, once this is in place, we have to make sure that we train those involved. That's failure number two, not training those involved. In your business, who will perform one or more major steps in the process? Make sure they clearly understand how to do it right and how often it needs to be done to consistently get the desired results you're looking for. Failure number three, failure to measure performance on the right scorecards. 
looking for three things, right? You guys already know what your scorecard is. I've already given it to you. I broke it down into the categories of your lead gen, your enrollment, yeah, your member service, but the scorecards will actually extrapolate from there. We'll create department scorecards. We'll actually create individual scorecards. This is going to make management a breeze as your business scales out because you're gonna have clean and clear data. You'll have clarity to make proper decisions. So again, what are they? Are the steps in the process being done properly? Are they being done frequently enough to get the desired result? And are we getting the desired results? That's what a scorecard will show us. Again, it's unbiased data that we need to run our business at a 30,000 foot view. When you eventually have freedom, all you'll be able to do is manage from that scorecard, which is amazing because now you make really great decisions. From there, we have the process, we have the team, and we have clean and clear data. The next biggest failure is we have to manage to that data. We have to manage to the process, and we have to manage those involved. So we have to use the data provided by step two to lead and manage your people and drive accountability for the following the process. Reward and recognize those who do things well and get the desired results. Coach or retrain those who do not follow the process. Don't do it off enough or can't get the results you want. One of the most important things is with management is that if we have the first three things built, we have to understand who is succeeding in our business. We have to be recognizing their efforts, showing that these are the behaviors that we expect from the entire team. And then in private, those that are struggling, we need to build a system where we can elevate their skill set to continue to work with them so we can level them up because we know a business is only as strong as our weakest team member. And then finally, as we work through the business, as we get the first four things in place, the last one is we have to go back and update the core processes regularly, right? We, we talk about the three core values of a business, be present, be relentless, and be uh, opportunistic. What is the opportunity to improve the company? This is your opportunity to be an entrepreneur, right? This is your chance to say, how can we make it better? How can we make it simpler? How can we make it faster? If you guys haven't, write these five down. Pause the screen right now. These are the five mistakes you need to avoid. At any time you're frustrated, look back on this list. There's a good chance, I would say a 99.9% uh, chance that if you are frustrated in your business right now, you have failed, and I will say it that way, you have failed, you specifically the owner, because you are in control, right? We talked about that. It's your business, you make the decisions. You failed to do one of these things. Nobody else in your business is responsible for doing this but you. And if you're frustrated right now with where your business is at, take a hard look. Do you have your proven process done? Are you actually training those involved? Do you have the proper scorecards in place? Are you actually managing it to those first three? And then from there, when we know a better way, are we updating the core process and then swinging back around and training our team, updating the scorecards? If not, that's where your frustration is coming from. If you go give relentless attention to these five bullet points, you will be successful. If you continue to fail to do these five things, you will not be in business very long. To get this right, it typically takes a business 24 to 36 months of consistent focus. This is not an overnight quick fix, but instead a long-term solution to a business that is actually sellable, provides constant cash flow, and most importantly, provides a path for you to have freedom. Here is the four key things that we're working towards. We want your business to be profitable. We want it to make a massive impact in the members that you, that you coach, but also in your team, make a massive impact in their lives. Next, we wanna have your personal freedom. The business should actually serve your dreams as well. And finally, the business needs to be an asset. At one point, if you choose to, it's packaged up in a way that actually is sellable. Most of the businesses in the industry are not sellable. They're not assets. All they are selling is the book of business and they're selling uh, the equipment. They're not actually selling the proven process. That's where your gold is. When you can sit down with a, a future buyer and say, I have a proven way to get a very specific result and nobody else in the market knows how to do this, that's your competitive advantage. That's where you're gonna get a bigger multiplier. 
Some of the companies we've worked with, we've seen them get three or four or five multipliers when they actually go to sell their business. That is an amazing thing to accomplish because now all that time that you put in, all these hours that you're working right now, you're getting a multiplier effect of that. That's what the goal of being an entrepreneur is, is to have your time pay dividends long term. Although this takes time for the long term solutions by making this a priority, you'll feel an uptick of the business pulse in the first 30 days. Now, I probably scared the bejeebas out of you when I said 24 to 36 months. I meant it though. Your business will be 100% healthy. It'll be strong if you focus on those five bullet points over the next 24 to 36 months. That doesn't mean you're not gonna feel a surge in the pulse in the first 30 days. I know a lot of you don't have 24 to 36 months, but when we wanna build a business that's sellable, that's how long it'll take. If we want to just get the business out of sinking the first 30 days, we can actually save the business and get it going in the right direction. So please understand this program does work fast, but it's also got a long-term projection of what we're trying to do. Again, build that business that is not only profitable, it has crazy levels of impact in your community, but also with your team, provides you your freedom to chase your own personal dreams, and it's actually a sellable asset. In two years to three years, you can have all of these built out. My goal is that in the first 30 days uh, to, to 90 days, we've already started working towards the profit and impact portion. The freedom will come in mastery when the team is in place, and then we start to get the management system in place. Now let's break down the four ascension ladders in great detail. First, we'll start with the nano. The nano will lay the foundation for all the ascension ladders to come. The Nano Ascension Ladder's goal is to simply move your member to the next day and week. No different than a human who wants to run a mile, they first must take a step. The NAL job is to keep them on track from a daily and weekly aspect while also creating red flags if they go off track. I want you to think of a car driving down the road. It has the white line and the yellow line, and then it has the rumble strips. These little touch points, these feedback loops are allowing to make sure the car keeps going in the right direction. A lot of businesses have not built in these uh, touch points to ensure that the client is staying on track with their progress. We're gonna teach you right now how to ensure small little micro, tiny little nano touch points will ensure that they are on track and if they feel off track, we can red flag it before it actually flares up as an issue. A lot of the members that are leaving your business right now, you could have saved them because a lot of those things that were starting to fester up were happening three months to six months to a year ago. You just didn't recognize it because we weren't paying close enough attention. So what are the things that we need to look for? That's what we're gonna be taking a look at now. So here's where the nano happens in the entire enrollment machine process, right? To the left, we have the enrollment meeting. That's where we sit down, we have the conversation, we look at the pain state, we look at the desired state, we enroll them in their dreams, right? That's I give. From there, we have the kickoff meeting. The kickoff meeting is nothing more than getting them all the tools, the assets, and getting them jump-started into the program. After they, they go through the kickoff, they're ready to begin that first day. That's where Nano begins, the initial coaching program. And then finally on the right, what we're working towards is that celebration day. Here's what Nano looks like from a week snapshot. So the member is going to be attending some level of, of classes, right? They might be, if you're a brick and mortar facility, they're gonna be coming in um, and getting some level of, of coaching. But if you're a digital space, they're gonna be doing the training digitally. At some level, somehow, they're getting the fitness component from there, what are the other touch points? So we'll have email, we'll have text messages, we'll have specific tasks, um, we'll have notifications specifically for uh, a staff and then other text messages for a staff and then any other details that we need to take action on. So here's an example uh, of, of what we'll call the acclimate week one. So they attend their first class and what are they gonna get? They're gonna email about building the foundation. And then we know that we're actually gonna send them a text message at the end of that night saying, hey, you attended your first class. That's an action-based thing. They attended the class. Let's send them a text and just follow up, right? If your mom, um, or I remember when my, my grandma came to the gym, she was, uh, she's 80 years old and she actually joined uh, and, and I actually got to coach her. It was, it was an amazing feeling. So grandma comes to class, what do I do with grandma? Well, I'm gonna text her that night or I'm gonna call her and say, grandma, how are you feeling? It should be no different than if it's not a loved one. 
right? Show them that type of empathy and how much you care. And I'm actually going to follow up and do that on day three as well. So their second time they trained with me, I'm going to reach back out because I know that that soreness is going to be uh, delayed. And so I want to reach back out because it's an opportunity to have a conversation that if they're overly sore, if they're overly scared about it, I can instantly provide comfort and actionable steps to alleviate that pain. Right? So again, this is when you stack all these actions together, we have the nano week. It's all these little touch points. And then what, is, what does a nano day look like? Well, again, it's the specific action task that they're taking. So they attend class, they get an email about mindset, and on top of that, they're getting a text, excited to see your check-in. Right? So I'm pre-framing on Thursday, hey, I'm excited to check in and see how your first week went because I know that on Saturday, they're actually going to get a check-in email from me where I'm going to ask a set of specific questions to allow me to understand if they're on track or off track with their goals. So I'm pre-framing that, hey, on Saturday, your check-in's coming and I'm excited to see how you're doing. What does the nano really do? At, at the highest level, it's just creating a constant feedback loop. So yes, we see our members in person, but we have the opportunity to touch base with them um, externally. And here's the funny part. I bet when it was just you running your business, you were, already doing, you were already doing all these things. But the problem is you didn't have it documented. And when you start to build your team, they don't know that these are the actions they should be doing. They don't know on the first day a member needs to receive a text message and you should ask them how they're feeling. On top of that, if you train them to do that, we need to build a system that reminds them to do that. Systems and software, the beauty of them is they should make your coaches take humanized actions, not become the human. That's one of the big things that Factory Forge believes in is we don't want your software to replace you. We want it to make sure that you're more effective and efficient in how you coach. So as we scale out, that's why this is so important is having this laid out and then applying the software to it so that your coach is noted to take the action. And then on top of that, eventually we'll manage the software, which will have the coaches taking the action. So as you move into the operator or management role, you can look at the dashboard and say, oh, coach one did text member, uh, you know, Jane on her first class. I can see that that task is checked off. And now you're able to start to manage the business, you're managing the process, and the people are managing your members. So what, what is the nano doing at the highest level? We just said it, but it's really saying, member, here's your to-dos for either the day or the week. It's time to check in. And these are little nano check-ins. They could be daily or weekly check-ins. And then from there, the coach is providing feedback, but it's in a personalized setting. So it's personalized to them. That's very, very important. We're not, we're not white labeling all the information. We're actually saying, look, you struggled with this or maybe you went a little off track here. Here's how we're gonna correct it. Imagine a car going down the road and one car veers to the left and one car veers to the right. Well, if that feedback's not personalized, well, maybe you, you tell the car that went to the right, hey, correct to the left, but you also tell the car that went to the left, hey, correct to the left. The feedback needs to be personalized. Again, software, your job with the software is to create opportunity to personalize the feedback, not to white label it, not to mass produce it. We're a coaching company that is dependent on getting a, an amazing transformation. Don't try to take the easy way. If you do it the right way, you're gonna have uh, your members bringing all your future members in because you're doing something that nobody else in the market's doing. You're doing it the right way. The daily and weekly nano tasks ensure they move forward while giving them a strong sense of personalized guidance along the journey. To keep a member coming back for years to come, we first must keep them coming back for tomorrow. It's that simple. For a lot of you, you're frustrated that your members are leaving at the day 90, uh, day 180. You're frustrated that they're leaving. And the only way you can fix it is get them to come back tomorrow. It's that simple. Show them how excited you are to work with them tomorrow. And you keep stacking that mentality on day after day after day after day after day. That's what builds a relationship. If you want to marry the person of your dreams, you have to show excitement every day that you're excited to see them. That's how you build a lasting relationship. The same principles to a strong marriage apply to having a strong business. You have to really care for them. You have to help them overcome their obstacles and, and have that empathy to, to continue to help them chase their dreams. 
Your job is to get them to come back for tomorrow. That's how we solve it. Now that we have the general understanding of what a nano ascension ladder is, we will move them to a micro. A micro ascension ladder will focus on the key milestones that lead to the initial goal. So if the goal, the macro, is to climb the mountain, the milestones, the micro, are the camps along the way, and the steps, the nano, are how we move forward. Again, I keep using the, the climbing the mountain analogy, but somebody comes in and they set the goal of, I want to lose, uh, I want to lose you know, 20 pounds in 45 days. That's their Everest. That's the mountain they're trying to climb. Where we can get really, really good is, is focusing on the nano and the micro because we know it's the daily actions and it's the milestones along that journey that will keep them focused. Don't actually focus on losing and, and reaching the top of the mountain. That's just the goal. What we're going to focus on is the process of how to get the goal. Another way to think about it is if your son or daughter is studying for a test, don't focus on them getting an A. Study on the, the actions, the behaviors that they need to take to get that A. Attending class, getting a good night's sleep, doing their homework, not being distracted. Those are the things that are going to lead to success, not focusing on the A. So where does this fall? Well, we know we have enrollment. Now we have the kickoff day. We know where nano is. Micro also falls in that same coaching program, right? These are the milestones. So the nano is the days, the steps. Micros are the small mini goals that they're achieving along the way. So this is what most businesses look like. They're actually acquiring people in the state of pain who want to move to a desired state uh, on the bottom right, right? We have angry, sad stick figure, and we have happy stick figure. Most businesses, this is what you're doing. You're having, here's how you start, and then here's the top of the mountain. There's nothing in between. There's no way to know if the person is on track or off track, and there's no uh, feedback loop that, hey, you're succeeding, keep it up. You're doing really well. You're actually on track. You're, at, you're, you're moving you know, fast through the process. We need to give them that feedback. So good businesses are going to start to add in some key milestones. Right? And then when we start to layer these things over it, now we, have our, uh, now we have the nano with the micros working together. So what would be the first milestone is actually just signing up. And what would be maybe the next milestone is that first Friday check-in. Right? And then maybe the next one is them losing five pounds. So we have milestones, and then we have the daily wins. We have the, the nano feedback loop. The feedback loop, the nanos, are to get them to that first milestone. So once they sign up, what's the first major milestone we want to get them to? We want to get them to Friday, Saturday, when they check in with that coach. That's a big milestone. For them to actually follow the process for one week, that's success. That's amazing. We should be celebrating that as if they reached their, their fat loss goal. A milestone should be an action-based metric and not time-based. Time-based goals do not always equal results. If the goal is to create progression, reward the action that leads to the result. Simply being on the journey is not enough. They need to be moving. Here's a simple example. Do not reward somebody for being a part of your coaching program for a month. All that means is you swipe their credit card when they start it and you swipe their credit card again. That doesn't mean they're making progress, but instead you could reward them for coming to their 12th class, their 12th training session, to their first check-in. Make it action-based. Reward on action, not based off time. Time is, is completely useless. We have no clue that they're actually taking the actions to move forward. As an example, yeah, congratulations, you've been climbing Everest for two months. They may have taken no steps and they're still at the, uh, they're still at the bottom of base camp. There's no progress there. We shouldn't be rewarding them. That should be a red flag. So again, reward off of action, not time. They have taken the steps, accomplished the key milestones, and finally, they accomplished their SMART goal, right? This is what they, they came in initially said. Here's my pain state. Here's my desired state. Here's what I'm working towards. The macro is your result. We got niche 2.0. We got offer. And then finally, we have result. By building a process like we just did, the goal is to get really, really good at ensuring that we, we get people to that result. 
most businesses, coaching companies right now, when they enroll somebody, they're actually not getting them that result. If you just do this first three phases of the Ascension Ladders, you're going to be really successful because you're going to do something that nobody else is doing. You're actually making good on that promise. You're delivering them to where they want to be. So let's get back to our, our little uh, member journey. We have the sign up. We have the daily wins, we have the bright spots, but we also have the check-ins. We have that daily feedback loop started. Now we have the milestones happening. And next we have the big green box, the celebration. We have the milestone happening, right? That's where we gotta get them. That is what success is. I want you to picture that person on the right celebrating is not just the member, it should actually be the coach. It's not about enrolling the person. The enrollment is useless. I don't care about you taking their money. I care about you getting them the result because that's going to build a strong business. If you take people's money but you do not get them the result, you will not be in business for very long and your competition will replace you. If you get very good at doing the bottom uh, right, getting them that transformation, you will be in business for, for years to come. So where does this happen? Well, it happens on celebration day, right? key part is setting that SMART goal. We've already broken that down. By setting a SMART goal, it's measurable. We know it's time-based. We know there's a deadline. We can actually say, did this or did this not happen? The one thing I want you guys to think about is on the journey, I'm going to actually have you guys slide the celebration to the left, just one stage. Here's where I've seen a lot of businesses who are actually good at getting people to the accomplished stage go wrong. There's one more box that needs to get added, one more milestone, and you guessed it. The next milestone is to set the next SMART goal, right? We talked about the first thing I said. If you help them climb the first mountain, ask them where we're going next, and it's the perfect time to ask them. Do not ask them before they've actually accomplished their goal because when you do that, you're changing the entire psychology of the coaching relationship. You wait to ask where we're going next once they've reached the top of the mountain. So here's what it looks like. We have the enrollment meeting, we have the kickoff meeting, we have the initial coaching program, again, that takes them from uh, pain state to desired state. From there, we combine our celebration day and our goals meeting. So we go goals accomplished, we celebrate, and then we establish the SMART goal. It's going to look like this. This is the entire process of how we actually run our coaching companies. We do this actually at Factory Forge. This is the exact way we actually coach you guys. And this is how we actually coach uh, the gym owners and the business owners, the fitness entrepreneurs. This is how they work with their members. 90-day goals work extremely well. So look at this. We enroll the member that's brand new off the street. We enroll them in their dreams. The kickoff meeting is just that. We're kicking them off into the program. We're getting them started. Um, we're giving them all the tools that they need to get rolling. The initial coaching program, that can have a length of time of anywhere from, you know, say four weeks to 12 weeks. That is going to be dependent on how long, what is the minimum amount of time to help them reach that goal in a safe setting. From there, we build a block in that comes right after it that is truly the celebration day, an opportunity to celebrate their success, but we're going to combine it with a goals meeting. It's very important to be asking them, what is next? Where are we going? And then from there, this is the model. We just continue to repeat this. So we have that goals meeting, and now we're going to insert the initial coaching, or the, not the initial coaching program, but the coaching program. And then we keep working at just hammering out smart goal after smart goal after smart goal after smart goal, and we, we do this in a 90-day uh, phase. So the macro is the result, and by stacking several results together, we create a true life-changing transformation. So now, let's introduce for the first time ever the Mega Ascension Ladder. Majority of businesses have no Ascension Ladder built in their business. Even if they magically get the random result to match the member's goal, they have nothing up next. Good businesses will have at least two levels. The initial, which is the indoctrination, right? It's, it's getting them their desired result, but also indoctrinating them into your program, and then the core coaching program. The initial coaching will do two things specifically. It will move them to their desired state in a short amount of time. Again, four to 12 weeks is kind of that gold standard. From there, it will indoctrinate them into your culture and community to prepare them for the core coaching program. All right, so 
a good business will have the two levels, right? They're gonna have the initial coaching offer and then they're gonna have the core coaching offer. Now your competition and even yourself right now, you may be coming in this program with only having actually your core program. The issue with having only your core program is that there's much too high of a learning curve and it probably actually does not solve the prospect's initial pain. And if you made that your core program, it actually kind of waters your program down. So we have to kind of separate them. When I launched my business way back in the day, I actually launched with an initial coaching program. I ran, uh, it was a 12 week boot camp for women only, and it was specifically around fat loss. And at the end of 12 weeks, you can guess what I did. I moved them all into our core coaching program, which I had launched at that time, and then I relaunched another ICO. Now, before we move forward, it's very, very important that before you move somebody from your ICO to your core coaching, the, what is the one thing that has to happen? You had to make good on your promise. You have to deliver them to the desired state. You are not in the right to ask them to ascend up to the next program until you've made good on your promise. Next, it's just like first grade and second grade and third grade. If they haven't tested out of first grade, they're not ready for second grade. That's why this is a ladder. They have to complete phase one before they can go to phase two. Now let's address the next thing, the lengths of the program. I put those there as general ideas, four to 12 weeks, six to 24 months and beyond. But truthfully, again, it goes back to, did they get the desired result? When they get the desired result, now we can have the conversation about moving into the next coaching program. You also see some bullet points underneath, one-on-one, -on -one, small group, large group. One of the things I wanna do right now is take a pause in the course, in the learning, and address something that I feel is probably one of the biggest issues, is that every consulting coach out there right now is telling you the right way to do it. I don't wanna tell you the right way to do it. What I wanna teach you is the principles of business that are, that are time tested. The truth is, large group works for some businesses at certain phases of their business. And small group works for some businesses at certain phases of their business. And one-on-one -on -one works for some businesses at uh, certain phases of their business. The point being is none of them are superior to each other. They're all equal. The key is to understand at what phase your business is at and what you should be implementing. Example, if your business is hemorrhaging cash, you're about to close your doors, I hate to say it, I would recommend you to do a large event launch purely because it's going to get you the cash flow you need to make sure your doors stay open. The worst thing in the world would be to have your doors shut down. Now, if your business is at 300 plus members, you don't really wanna grow it, you know your set churn rate, well now you might be looking at doing a specific small group onboarding or one-on-one. -on -one. Again, the goals have changed. You're trying to hold status quo, you're not trying to grow fast. But if you're, if you're hemorrhaging money, well now small group and large group look a little bit like an easier thing because it's saving you time. One-on-one is very timely. Uh, you're only working with one person, whereas large group, you can say have 20 to 40 people in that same group for that same amount of hour. You're gonna make a lot more money. All of them are right and all of them are wrong. They all have pros and cons. The key is to understand which one is the right fit for you at where you're at in the journey. So no more is, is a, an event launch challenge the right way to do it. And no more is one-on-one -on -one onboarding the right way to do it. On top of it, we need to pause. And if we're able to do more than one, if we're able to offer, say, small group and one-on-one, -on -one, now we're asking them to decide. What do they want to do? Are they more comfortable in a one-on-one -on -one setting? Or are they more comfortable working in a small group setting? Right? So there's, there's a couple of key elements before we move forward. One is what's right for your business. And then second, secondly, what will be right for the member? Right? But if your business is at this point right now, you don't know if you're gonna be able to make rent next month, I would highly recommend in this moment, maybe not forever, you do a large event launch. And if somebody comes in and says, I wanna do one-on-one, -on -one, it, it might be great to make that extra 500 bucks, but the problem is you don't have the time. You're time poor and you're cash poor. You need to save your time. You need to work with a large amount of groups so you can get cash in, so then you can get them into core coaching program, which is gonna boost the revenue significantly. Again, N neither one is right and neither one is wrong. It's simply picking the right one for the right time of your business. Okay, Whew. take a breath. We have that finally laid out. 
Um, let's take a look at these one more time before we move on. So our ICO is simply put, it's, it's going after the niche. It's, it's marketing that desired result. In most brick and mortar gyms, it might be uh, you know, fat loss, it could be pain. And then from there, it's what is the offer? And we, again, we want the offer to be short. If you said, hey, in tw uh, 24 months, I can help you lose fat, people aren't gonna bite at that. They're gonna look for something faster, right? So we wanna make it the shortest time possible that will get them desired result. I put four weeks there. Um, to 12 weeks because that's kind of the generalized uh, length for that of what people will actually be willing to buy into because they don't also know you that well. They don't trust you that much yet. Um, the sweet spot seems to be around six to eight weeks. And I've tried, I I've honestly, I've done all of them. I've done four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, and I've done 12 weeks. Uh, we have settled in at uh, really six to eight weeks, which is right for our business. It doesn't make it right for your business. Again, you're going to decide what's right for you. From there, uh, we're going to move into the core coaching program, the CCO, and that program is roughly six to 24 months. Again, we know that that program ends once they've achieved all the skills, and we'll talk about this later on, but this core coaching program can also happen in a one-to-one -one fashion. It could happen in a small group or large group. You're going to decide those things. How do you want your business? Do you want to be all one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? We go back to that coaching model. Well, that's kind of phase one, that, you know, one-to-one, one -one, one to few, one to many, right? So where are you at in your journey of your business? Um, I would say that the strongest businesses actually have a blend of all three. Um, you know, at our, our specific uh, coaching company right now, we have a large group offer, we have a small group offer, and then you have the ability to do one-on-one. -on -one. We, we, we are serving all three. If you don't have that ability and you're time poor, I always think large group is better because you can get more people in, um, you can have a larger impact, and then you actually can reverse engineer and build out your small group next, and then you can build out your one-on-one -on -one once you have your team. So from there, what does the core coaching program do? It's gonna move them to the new desired states, right? We talked about how that 90-day uh, process will start to repeat itself. That's happening in that core coaching. Um, so it's gonna move them to the new desired state while incorporating all the tools and habits. So here's what it looks like. The initial coaching formats, we have the enrollment appointment. This is where we sit down, we do the I give process, right? We're gonna enroll them in their dreams. From there, we have the kickoff appointment. That's where we sit down and we have the conversation about here's everything you need. We're gonna get them prepared for day one. Then from there, you're picking what you want to do. This is up to you. Again, in the next training, I'm gonna break down where maybe your business is at and give you some scenarios of, of maybe how I would handle it. But ultimately, as your business gets up and running, you'll be able to decide this. So the program is roughly four to 12 weeks. Um, again, I think the sweet spot is somewhere between six and eight. And you can do one-on-one. -on -one. You can do hybrid. Hybrid would look something like uh, maybe three one-on-one -on -one sessions, and then they roll into uh, some, some group work. You can do small group, and then you can do a massive event launch. Massive event launch is where you start, you know, say 20 to, you know, I've seen 20 to 50 plus people start. And the way you would do it is uh, everybody comes in for one big kickoff appointment and then they have set times where they, they come in and work with a coach. It might be six in the morning, it might be 6.30 at the night uh, time. But those are really your four main ways to roll out your initial coaching program. One-on-one, -on -one, hybrid, uh, group, and then event launch where everybody starts at one specific period in time. All right, so in the next upcoming lessons, one of the things we're gonna be working through is we're gonna be picking what is going to be your, your initial coaching offer. And again, I will be breaking it down, uh, giving you some scenarios of, of maybe how I would handle that depending on where your business is at. But what I will say is that once you get up and going, there's a good chance you're gonna use more than one of these. Uh, as an example, to this day still, we use an event launch for very timely uh, specific things in the year, right? Like New Year's, spring break, summer, and then back to school. Those are our four main times where we do a massive event launch. And then from there, um, we use one-on-one -on -one for individuals that don't want to be in a, a large group setting. They want to work specifically with one coach. Um, or maybe their you know, current scenario requires them to work one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then we also use in the time when we're not doing the event launch, we'll use small group. So we'll start small groups on Mondays. So every Monday, we're starting a small group. Um, every, every Monday, we're starting a one-on-one. -on -one. And I will say that we don't use hybrid right now, but we just had the conversation at the time of me filming this of should we switch to a hybrid setting where people start one-on-one -on -one and then they move uh, into a small group setting. 
or they stay in the one-on-one -on -one setting. So a strong business long-term will use more than one way to onboard because people personalities are different. Some people are going to enjoy the group setting and some people do not despise uh, and do not want to be in a, a group setting model. Now, it's your business. You might want to choose to be all one-on-one. -on -one. Just understand there's, there's limiting factors and there's also positives of doing it that way. It's really high attention. Um, but what is the, the benefit versus a hybrid, right? And we're going to get into that stuff. I don't want to, I want to talk about it now. But uh, again, going back to it, none of these are better than the other and none of them are uh, worse than the other. It's just they're different. And what's beautiful about this model is that you can pick and choose what is right for your business. Um, even more importantly, you can change your mind and you don't have to be married to one concept. You might find that you actually love the event model. It, it really uh, invigorates you. I, I can honestly say my favorite thing to coach is a group of uh, 30 to 40 uh, beginners all at once. It's just the energy in the room is always amazing. And you cannot get me to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, you couldn't get me to do one-on-one -on -one coaching in the gym. And even in Factory Forge, I still to this day will not do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I just, I despise the one-on-one -on -one setting. I, it, I get, to me, it's boring. I, I, li I like the energy. So again, it's a personality thing for me. I like more of a small group setting. I like more of a uh, event launch setting. That's up to you what you're going to pick. So great businesses will have at least three of these levels. They're going to have their initial, again, indoctrination program. Now they're going to have a core program. They're going to have a longevity program, right? So this is the fun stuff. This is where uh, this mega ladder really starts to take shape. So now here's what a strong business really looks like. We have the initial coaching program. It's something probably along the lines of four to 12 weeks. We move into our core coaching program, and then we have a longevity program. And then from there, we have an ambassador program. Big things to understand, what is different between a longevity coaching program and a core coaching program? The core coaching program is, is really building off the initial. So the initial is, is the awareness of the tools, right? Of, of how to live the lifestyle, but they're not actually living it yet. They're just, they're the tool, the thing we're doing like time blocking, drinking the water, it's actually separate from them. It's not part of them yet. The core coaching program, we're really trying to introduce all of the tools and we're starting to actually turn them into habits. And what really starts to change then with the longevity coaching is that we're actually starting to remove us as the coach out of the relationship. We're starting to allow them to spread their wings. They're not needed as much accountability because these are habits that are now a part of them. And then finally, the people that really have the, the longevity side down there, the, this is a habit. This is, you know, the word we'll use often is this is their lifestyle. They're not on a diet anymore. They don't go to work out. That's, it's just who they are. Those are the individuals we want to make ambassadors, right? These are the people that they embody being a perfect member to us. And, and we'll talk a little bit about what an ambassador can uh, be in your business, but it's recognizing the kind of the, the A students and then we actually get to leverage them. There's some cool things you can do with it. Uh, initial coaching program, let's go through it one more time. Uh, intro to the tools, the culture, and the lifestyle, right? It's the indoctrination of getting them that initial result, but also getting them warmed up to who we are and what we do. From there, they move and they ascend into the core coaching program. We don't know how long they're going to be in this program for, right? It's, it's ultimately getting them to a maintenance level where they're happy. And they're like, if I could hold this for the rest of my life, this is great. So the tools turn into habits. Habits translate to lifestyle. And once they kind of get to where they feel super, super comfortable, again, six months, 24 months, could be longer. Now they're going to move into the longevity coaching. So what is longevity? Longevity ultimately is the self-actualization. They're living at their highest potential. They now have all the, the skills, the tools, and they're, they're not that. It's, it's, they're living the lifestyle. They have full control of themselves, and they are completely optimized to be the happiest, healthiest person they physically can be. So in this stage, the self-actualization also means that they require less attention. So in the core coaching program, the initial coaching program, one of the things that we do um, in my specific business, again, you don't have to do it this way, but I highly recommend in the nano process, we actually do a weekly check-in where they're going to email my coach and then my coach will respond back. We have, and I'll take you through the exact email that we send them. And that again, allows us to understand are they on track, off track with, with their goals. But when we move them into core coaching, we keep that, that weekly, those touch points in. When we move into longevity, they still have a coach 
But now that coach is actually zooming out a little bit and those touch points actually move into being only uh, every week or excuse me, every month. So we go from having a touch point uh, every, every week to now only 25% of that touch point and that's happening every month. So touch point, touch point, and then we'll still have the physical meeting. So again, we're allowing them to spread their wings. Another way to think about this is that you send your kids uh, to kindergarten, first grade, and really elementary school. That's the ICO. And then when they go to middle school and they go to high school, that's your core coaching program. And then when they leave the house for the first time and they go off to college, that's kind of the longevity program. They're spreading their wings and eventually they're kind of getting that master's program, which is the ambassador. So what's up with the ambassador program? Well, really, again, it's ongoing. Same with longevity. Uh, The goal is that they are never leaving, right? Our goal is to fire ourselves by the end of the 24 months of the core coaching, but they stay because of of what the community and the culture bring to and who they are and the lifestyle. The ambassador program, it gives the members status amongst their peers. So what do people want once they've mastered the lifestyle? They want to be seen in a status way. Right? This is a lot of reasons why people go back and they become coaches. Right? Once they've mastered it for themselves, they want to give back. And before we make them a coach, one of the things we can do is we can make them an ambassador in the program. Right? That can be people that help with events. Um, you know, we're, we're using for very specific things. Um, but really what they are is they're creating uh, internal leadership inside the membership. They're going to be the people that are going to steer the culture and continue to kind of rein in the personalities. Um, When I played hockey, we had captains, right? A lot of sports teams have captains. Think of these individuals as kind of the captains. Uh, They represent the the community. And it's, it's a different type of leadership, which I still think is very important. And ultimately, for anybody to be an ambassador, remember that a member assessment tool, they need to be a A or A plus member. Um, They should be really your perfect member. This, you know, if you have 300 members to make this uh, have a little bit more perspective, I'm talking three to five people at tops. I'm not saying you're having 100 ambassadors. You're literally picking your perfect A plus client. If you could clone them, you would have, you would build your entire business off of them. So it's not something you're going to have a lot of. You're going to have one, two, or three, four. Again, when you build this out, you want to put some parameters because it's very hard to take away the ambassadorship. Once you give them that status, it's very hard to take it away. So you want to be very cautious with this last step. Again, that's why you're probably bed with this person for three, four years before you give them this status. So let's take a look at Factory Forge. So one of the most interesting things is most individuals have no clue about this value ladder. And what's kind of interesting about it is it's not really relevant to them either. They don't really need to know because um, a lot of times people will think they need mastery, but when you break down an enrollment call, what they actually need, they're don't have enough profitability. They don't actually have cash flow fixed in their business. So I actually choose as the marketing director to not even showcase our mastery program at the time of filming this. Again, this may change, but right now I don't want to create confusion of like all these different things we do. I want them to just focus on the one thing we do. So we do that through the enrollment machine. It's 16 weeks in length. You're in it right now. And here's what we're going to do. We create clarity in the business. What is your niche? What's your offer? What's your message? What's your result? We create a very specific systematic approach of how you deliver that result. And then from there, we give you the skills to go attract your dream members, the ability to do lead gen. We teach you how to roll, uh, enroll through iGive. We teach you how to enroll through creating the, the world-class members experience. And that's going to create profitability. It's going to create cash flow in the business. Now, cash flow in the business is not health in the business but it means you stay alive. So the first thing we're going to do is just like with a human, we're gonna make sure they can breathe. Just like your business, we're gonna make sure you have cash. We're gonna have profitability. The most important thing is you have to have cash flow. It does not, and I will repeat this, cash flow does not mean your business is healthy and strong. It just means you're able to breathe. Now mastery, when we slide into mastery, that's where we actually work on the health and the strength of the business. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale the business through the team. And we're going to do that by actually building out strong SOPs in business operations. We're going to build out strong management processes to ensure the health of our team, the health of our coaching is extremely strong. And when we're able to do that, we're able to then actually scale profit again and we're able to scale impact. So the end result of all of that, of mastery at the end of 24 months, is we have more profit, 
we're actually able to help serve more people by creating bigger impact. And then finally, we've created a very strong, healthy business. I mean, internally. Um, marketing uh, department is very strong. The enrollment part uh, department is strong. The service department is strong. And then the management department is strong. Okay, and then next we have our inner circle. So these individuals, these business owners, they have a, a profitable business. They have a business that creates amazing impact in the members that they coach and the, in the, the coaches as well, the, the team, and they have a very healthy business. What are they looking for? They're looking for actually to move to their specific desired state as a gym owner or a business owner. They're looking uh, for that freedom where the business actually starts to support their dreams through cash flow and through freedom. And then finally, it's our best inner circle members that we're ascending up to become ambassadors. These are the individuals that are supporting people in the enrollment machine and actually working with them um, as the captains in uh, the membership side of things. So again, that's how we do it uh, at Factory Forge. We have the four stages, enrollment, mastery, inner circle, and ambassador. Now we know what a great business looks like, right? And we know that we want to be a great business, but there can only be one. That's the category king. And in your market right now, somebody is the category king. How do you become them? Well, let's take a look at what they're doing. They have a double-sided ascension ladder. And this is, might be completely brand new to you. But at, when you see it, you're going to say, well, that's not that advanced. Of course not. It's not how advanced the concept is. It's actually making the concept work. This is a very basic concept, but most people forget to see actually how fundamentally simple it is. Therefore, they're not implementing it. Think about this. You start with a goals meeting, you ascend them into your ICO, you move them into your CCO, and then eventually you move them into your longevity coaching program. Your best members will eventually move up into ambassadors. Your ambassadors then not only should uh, represent the, the culture and the community from a member side, but we should actually create the opportunity for them to slide in and join the other side. We'll do that through maybe a workshop. And again, you guys can fill that side in. We actually teach that in mastery of how to do this, but I'm just giving you guys the, the overarching concept that will slide them in through say a workshop. Then we'll ask them to become an intern. We have a specific in internship process. Then we move them into an assistant coach. Assistant coach is somebody that is helping with class, but cannot lead it. Then we have somebody that is coaching and they can actually flow a class, they, they can lead it. And then finally, we have an associate coach. Associate coach is, is coaching not only on the floor um, through the fitness component, but they're doing the entire uh, 360 degree coaching components. And so that's how we built our business. So a lot of my coaches today, they started in boot camp, which we don't call it that anymore. Um, you know, that was, that was like a 2010 thing. But they went initial coaching program, then they went to my core, and then they, were, they had things figured out, right? They, they themselves were on point, so they became ambassadors. And I was at that point, I was like, you really get this. Do you want to actually help other people's journey, help them on their journey as well? Like, would that be fun? And they're like, yeah. So what's great about this is when I pull my ambassadors, I already know that they're my dream member. They already have my core values. And they already know how to do it for themselves. It's just teaching them how to teach it to others. They're actually the easiest people to help them become a coach. Um, and so we do that by you know, sliding them over to that workshop and then we have a process to ascend them up. That is the, uh, that's really the mega uh, ascension ladder right there. But if I would have just started with this, none of it would have made sense. So this should be the ultimate goal. This is the dream state of the business. Um, and this is where the business uh, completely you know, self fulfills itself. So you gotta worry about just one thing, which is get new members in the door and continue to send them up. And that's actually how you find your next wave of coaches. It's through your best members. You now have clarity of who you serve, the result you provide, the coaching you offer, the message to attract them, and now you know how to ascend them through your double-sided ascension ladder. Let's take a look at everything we learned today. So why is the ascension ladder so very important? Well, what the ascension ladder does from a uh, nano side is it makes sure is that people stay on track, right? They don't fall off track and it gives us the best opportunity to help them reach that macro. 
The micro, simply put, is helping them get some small wins before they get their, their big win, that big macro goal, that smart goal. The micros are giving them that sense of, hey, I'm on track, I feel good about what I'm doing, look at the, look at the wins I'm getting. It's as simple as like, hey, have you noticed that your clothes are starting to fit a little bit looser? Or congratulations, uh, you averaged you know, seven nights in a row where you hit eight plus hours of sleep. Like you're on track, keep it up, you're going to hit that goal. Again, it's giving them that, that positive energy that they're doing the right things, giving them that important feedback. From there, the macro, we can't help people if they don't have SMART goals because they're gonna hold us accountable to make sure that we deliver them to that desired state. So how do we create an offer if we don't help them set a, a SMART goal? So an offer is only as good as the SMART goal that's set with it. And then from there, the mega structure is what I think a complete thing of beauty, which is truly how to build your entire business to flow um, up fr from the member ladder all the way into the coaching ladder and how they work together. So there you have it. You have the gone through the entire training of member ascension ladder. You now understand what a nano uh, ascension ladder is. You understand what micro is, macro, and mega. Now it's actually time to start building this in your business step by step. What are the emails we should be sending? What are the text messages? What is the what does the smart goals meeting look like? How do we actually build out our mega uh, ladder? And what are the uh, micro milestones that need to be happening? What is next? The rest of the training, we're gonna focus on three things only. How do we become immensely profitable? How do we have crazy impact in the members that we work with? And how do we start to build business freedom? The rest of your training does not need clarity. By now, you've gone through tons of lessons. You have clarity. You know exactly who it is you're helping. You have so much focus, it is insane. Now it's all about taking action and building the business brick by brick, step by step, to make sure that we can do these three specific things. How do we increase profit? To increase profit, we have to be better at showing value. We have to be better at enrolling. We have to be better at attracting. How do we create more impact? Well, we gotta be better at delivering that world-class result. We gotta be better at um, the nano and the, the micro and the macro. Um, how do we coach? How do we serve? How do we make people feel? And then through all of that, we're building out a business and laying it out step by step so it's not dependent on you. That as we move into mastery, we can start to enroll people in from the team side and the foundation's built. It's organized. They can understand how to implement it. They can learn how to implement it. That is so very important is that as we build this entire thing out, it's not just about money. It's not just about impact and it's not just about freedom. We have to do all three together. And when we do, you are going to start to have a beautiful business that really changes lives. But not only does it do that, it actually supports your dreams. Thank you.